Okay, we have a slight change in the agenda. Um, Andreas Kramer could not make it. So our uh, EU updates has been changed to EU update. And um, we are pleased uh, that Ulrich Sachs and Jonas Heigel got it right. Okay. Are going to present um, a transcript, uh, Transmart use case. So, with that, feel free to go over if you need to, if you have uh, um, more information. And after your talk, we'll take a break. Okay, thank you very much for this introduction. So, <laughs> the break will be after our talk. Yeah, it's a, it's a pleasure for me to uh, speak here because, uh, as you may or may not know, so since 10 years, we're having ITB to Transmart Europe meetings. So we're actually meeting in nice locations um, all over Europe. We've been in Paris, in Pavia, in, in England, in Göttingen. And so uh, we are talking about special topics for the European community. So. You know, there's different uh, funding schemes in Europe. Um, so I'm talking about uh, two funding schemes in Germany, which are really relevant for this community. <clears throat> and so it's worthwhile uh, picking uh, two interesting funding schemes, which I want to present to you, and then one explicit example how to combine different uh, data types, like genomic data, clinical data, and the tools we use, therefore. <clears throat> so, and... Uh, yeah, so this is the um, one funding scheme. It's called NFDI, the National Research Data Infrastructure. Huge funding scheme is actually um, built for 10 years. And it's not only medicine. So we are uh, the, the consortium dealing with uh, structured medical data in NFDI for Health, which the <laughs> name implicates. Uh, but there's also funding for um, arts, uh, there's for uh, social sciences, for engineering. So it's quite interesting to, to learn and cross-fertilize between the different uh, communities. So what we're doing is uh, trying to make uh, epidemiological studies findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. So it's all, you know, the fair uh, guiding principles, which sound to be all too easy and too tempting, but uh, the closer you get, the more difficult it is uh, to convince the data holding organizations to put in minimal effort in, in order to make their data findable. Uh, we've been discussing, so I'm having a one cross-sectional group on um, ethical, legal, social aspects. And they told even, uh, you know, the forms where they are capturing the data are intellectual property and they were not willing to share this data. So we had to come up with the licensing scheme, uh, which works. works. Uh, so at least the uh, first step of our timetable up here um, is fulfilled. So some of them are willing to share their forms, uh, even the annotation, uh, even the, the value sets for the forms. <clears throat> and we offer to uh, put in some fair metrics uh, to, to give them some feedback how findable is their data. So then the data, uh, metadata has to be extracted, um, you know, selected and then released. And of course they can keep their community specific portals. But what we want to have is one portal where you can find for some concepts like on, uh, I like Matwe's example on pancreatic cancer, because that's what we, we follow up on. So how would it be if you put in, uh, put in the diagnosis or subtype of pancreatic cancer or some um, genes um, relevant, um, involved in it and uh, get back some studies which were dealing with it with some follow-up since years you didn't know of before. But that's not all. So clinical trials, of course, are a big issue. And uh, we have the head of the uh, German clinical trial uh, community, the IITs, not the pharma. <laughs> So the, at least the IITs, and uh, we want to do the same. But um, as they are, most of them are certified with ECRIN, or ICRIN uh, so they have got some level of documentation um, and some, some metadata we can extract, so that's um, easier. And as um, most of them are using CDODM, so even the, uh, the extraction is easier, the ETL, because the metadata we can extract and the actual data is extractable. And uh, quite successful in green are the uh, uh, German centers for uh, health research. One of them is in our institute, uh, the German Center for Cardiovascular Health. So those guys already uh, are sharing uh, their um, case report forms, including all the annotation in CDS ODM. So that's great. And so uh, and you see the big train station. It's like, you know, like the, like the Amtrak station down the street. <laughs> 
uh, in Boston. So all the unstructured spaghetti data is being sorted uh, that, you, uh, that you can find in a showroom. You can see which concepts are, can be found in which uh, study, in which trial, and which uh, German Center for Health Research has some data. So this is a many years down the road that we can do so, uh, but um, yeah, the, the first uh, results we already ca uh, can see. Um, and uh, this is all part of a second funding scheme you may or may not have, uh, know of. It's the Medical Informatics Funding Scheme. Uh, this is the clinical data. We just talked before, like, like Sean was presenting or Matve was presenting. This is the hospital internal data, which is uh, structured very nicely in a, a data model um, and it's all in fire so it's fire models on on di on demographics on meds on labs um, it's all long annotated and right now we're defining extension data types on oncology on genomic reporting on pathology it's all um, falling nicely into place so we're right now going to the third funding period harvesting some of the uh, results of the data already okay that said, uh, we switch a little bit into one um, example, which I'm involved in many, since many, many years, because as a, um, I'm <clears throat> working a lot in uh, oncology projects. And this was a talk, it was a journal club in our clinical research unit uh, on pancreatic cancer, which really struck us all. And Günther Schneider, the one in the lowest, the second last author, <laughs> he, he put a very nice point, he told, um, Pancreatic cancer, as we heard before, um, is very severe because people only survive like six months. And, but some of them survive longer. What if you knew which uh, person is which subtype in order to intensify the therapy or to tell, well, it's only, um, the, 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 we want to save some side effects on these persons and give them some last nice six months. What if we had those factors? But most of the efforts um, right now in this clinical research unit was, was all based on biomarkers, on panels, on sequencing, with limited results. And he told, well, we need something more. And he presented in this nice paper. You have a close look at figure G. You see all the genes, uh, pathways, and so on. That's something we did before. Figure A actually got our attention because this is clinical data. So you see the patient tra tra trajectory, you see the timeline, and you see several events. Then we discussed a lot. Um, what if we had this data, he told me, and he told, actually, we do have this data because that's in the clinical cancer registry, uh, in the clinical cancer registry, and we can make this data accessible. The question would be, how would we do that? Um, so we told, well, we got um, a uh, transmart uh, since many years. Um, you know, we've been involved in the European project, so uh, that was the plan in the uh, clinical research unit to put all this data into transmart, the clinical data, additional um, genomic data, and uh, that's one of those two projects uh, which I present here. One is about uh, the CRU502, Deciphering Genome Dynamics for Subtype-Specific Therapy in Pancreatic Cancer. And the second one, which is very closely connected, is the Molecular Tumor Board uh, project. Uh, it's the same, you know, all cancer, uh, cancer patients in uh, bigger centers in Germany have to present to the um, cancer center, and uh, mostly they are tumor boards for lung, for GI, whatever, and as soon as those people are um, running out of therapy options, you can put them into a molecular tumor board, which is the same in the, in the US, but uh, that's a certification program in Germany. So as soon as you got a certificate, you're, I, uh, you can uh, have a molecular tumor board. Even the health insurance companies are paying for genotyping. That's nice. So you can actually have a panel and get the panel result back, but then, but then, then you get the, your panel data back, <laughs> Then you got one week to prepare uh, before the next tumor conference, and then to decide uh, yeah, which is which. Give him, him or, him or her the identified, the intensified uh, therapy, or just uh, go the, on the palliative side. And this is um, very ETL intensive. So uh, we have to see where the data is located. We have to see this. Uh, look at the structure of the data, which is technical. Uh, you have to discuss with people why uh, are we eligible to, to look at the data it's because this is something translational between clinical healthcare and research. So that's actually what my uh, research group is doing, translational research informatics, which is quite interesting and, and exciting. And um, this is a disturbing figure. Well, the case numbers are 
low compared to the millions and billions of numbers we saw. But you remember, those are actual patients and those are highly structured and high, highly annotated um, uh, uh, patient records in there. So, but they're stored in different locations. And as you can see here, some of them are in the dark red circle, some of them are in the blue circle, some of them in another circle. So you have uh, different contents for all of them. So you have to, keep, uh, have to keep track where the patients come from, have to keep uh, track of the content. The content gets revoked, you're in trouble because then you have to <laughs> uh, look for the data. But um, this is the sweet spot, the 103 in the middle uh, between uh, which were presented in the molecular tumor board um, with pancreatic cancer. So, but um, how does it look like in real? So I brought Jonas actually as supported to tell you more about the uh, pipelines. And it's something uh, I think um, um, for the workshop tomorrow, because tomorrow the ETL workshop will take place. I think um, we should share a lot of knowledge about how to extract data, uh, about the problem, uh, problems, about candid failures. I think it would be really interesting tomorrow. Thank you, Uli. Um, yeah, we built uh, different pipelines for the different projects because, as Uli already said, the data is stored in different locations. Um, as we can see in the upper left um, for the MTB report project, um, which is um, yeah, represented the ETI pipelines belonging to this project with a, um, yeah, uh, uh, with, with a, uh, um, logo from the MTB, MTB report project and the KFO pipelines are marked with a um, CIU pipe uh, logo. Um, in the MTB report project, um, we get uh, the um, next generation sequencing done by the Institute of Pathology, which uh, does all the sequencing for routine uh, patients and routine data. So um, since the MTB at the UMG in Göttingen is a yeah involving project and an involving prototype, um, we have quite a lot of changes there and no and currently are getting the data in an unstructured way. So the, in the end, there is a PDF report which is um, sent to the study nurses, which entered the information into OncoStar, the cancer registration system. But um, if you want to get this data automatically, um, yeah, it's quite uh, hard to pass this data. So we tried another approach and yeah, just tried to get this data directly from the Excel and CSV files created in the pathology department and pass them and then use uh, the REST API from the OncoStar system to import this data directly. Um, one large benefit is here that we increase the data quality because it's not copied anymore by hand. Um, so yeah, if a study nurse has to copy about, uh, around 60 variants per patient, um, that requires quite a lot of time and yeah, mistakes are human. Um, so they probably happen and by automizing this process, we yeah, make it less error prone. Another advantage is, this, is that we speed up this process. Um, so we are now from one hour per patient to five minutes or less. Um, in the CIU 5002, um, we, get, we are getting the genomic data from the NGS Integrative Genomics uh, Core Unit, uh, which uh, is performing the sequencing for um, yeah, non-routine data and is delivering this uh, data in another format, but we are able to use this directly for the import into the bio portal. Um, for the import into the bio portal, we are combining the patient data that we're getting from the OncoStar, the clinical um, cancer uh, documentary system, and um, combining it with the um, data from the NIC, and so, the, um, so and creating just for the, as for the Transmart import some TSV files and then use, uh, use the predefined ETA scripts to just import the data. Um, for the Transmart import, um, we are doing um, the, the, the similar thing. We are also exporting the data from OncoStar, getting some CSV file, and then we just need to apply some ETA processes to map this data in another format so that we can then 
import it into uh, Transmart. Yeah, we're doing this here for in both projects for the data um, of the MTB report project and the CRU 5002. And yeah, with that we getting uh, we have like four new ETL pipelines with. Uh, Helped, helped us to enhance these both translational research projects and also um, enhancing the care uh, because we have um, also have their better data quality and um, help to improve the processes. Um, the pipelines we developed there from the, uh, as I always said, from the molecular pathology into the cancer documentary, uh, cancer, cancer registration system, um, Oncostar, from Oncostar then to Toot, uh, into Transmart and from the ne uh, NIC uh, and Oncostar into the BioPortal and for the MTB report from Oncostar um, to, into the BioPortal where we used the previously imported genomic data. Yeah, um, well, if, you, if you are coming to the d uh, discussion and the outlook, um, we have quite a lot of further work to do. Um, we need to finalize the uh, MTB report, the BioPortal import um, currently, not all uh, genomic data uh, and also not all clinical patient data is imported. And um, we need um, also to integrate additional data into Oncostar or, and f or from the Oncostar import, um, um, import into, into Transmart. Currently, also just a subset is used. Um, as a prototype that we can present to other researchers and clinical researchers, um, then go on and use it for further, uh, yeah, add this missing data so that we can then use it for retrospective analysis of the MTB results or of the results in the CRU 5002. And then, yeah, analyze and review this data and results together with the clinicians and clinical researchers. Yeah, therefore we are at the acknowledgement. We want to uh, thank all college, uh, colleagues in the MTB report project and the CRU, CRU especially Lissy Hessmann and Volker Ellen wieder into their teams, as well as Tim Beisbert and Jürgen Dönitz and their teams and all the other people that helped us with their feedback and useful discussions and all the other work. Therefore, yeah. The screenshots? Yeah, we have also screenshots. Um, <laughs> I can show them. Yeah, here's our funding. Um, it, um, yeah. Um, so screenshots. From, yeah. Yes, the screen. Yeah, this is the screen. Thank you. So the, um, the uh, interesting part here would be uh, you could ask which uh, transmit version are you using. So <laughs> hitherto we were using 16.2 uh, um, until our security department told, oh, this is a little bit outdated. Uh, some components of the Docker container work are uh, quite not maintainable anymore, so we so were shut down with those containers, and everybody was really sad. Um, and um, being a part of the uh, I2P2 transport community, I was, uh, of course, trying to get some solution. Uh, we, we were looking at version 19.0, which we, I like a lot. The Axiom Medics uh, installation saved us a lot, and we used it a lot for teaching. And we told, so why? Uh, can we use version 19.1, which is released uh, and which were, is in use for the clinical research unit? Um, I can tell it works, so it's nice. Um, uh, and uh, we use it for uh, data review um, because uh, the clinicians need to, you know, they like this tree view, uh, so they can go through and they can ask easy questions with Smart R, which is integrated again. I'm really happy about that in 19.1. And so we use that a lot. Um, but the cancer guys actually, <laughs> between January and, and June, drifted away a little bit from, from Transmat because they wanted to have the integrated view. That's, in, that's uh, what we put into the title, the, the Transmat meets uh, C Bio portal. And uh, you could ask, uh, are you doing the one or the other? And the answer would be, we're doing both. We need both because a Transmat is great for, uh, for data review, for you know, quick import, look, is it uh, integrated correctly, something missing? Are there missings? Uh, so you can look at the data quality. It's very good. Uh, but for the uh, preparation towards the preparation of a tumor board, so we're still on the research side. I see BioPortal is great because you can connect to all the external databases. It's something I think uh, Transmart will never reach. So it's a, it's a different use case. And that's why, that's why I, I 
spell it explicitly here, so you actually need both in translation and research, at least for oncology. But the ETL pipelines are the same, so your team doesn't have to be much bigger in order to uh, look at both things. There was a, a, a quick uh, look. So here you see the uh, transplant as you know it, uh, so you can put your queries together, etc. You can look at two cohorts, um, nearly the same thing you see here, <laughs> the same ETL, same data integration. Uh, so you can look at your demographics in the middle, you know, those pipe charts, uh, you see the age distribution and so on. And additionally, you can see the genes. So maybe that's something to incubate, uh, to think about um, future Transmart I2B2 versions, I'm looking very uh, forward uh, towards the I2B2 user interface, the new one, and maybe we can can make it some um, bioportalish <laughs> in order to have uh, a, a new product in there. Okay, that's what we want to present here. And we're open for questions. Yeah, uh, there would be the, uh, uh, independent operational divorce pipelines. Oh, maybe we should uh, repeat the question first. The question was, is uh, um, um, the bio portal and transport pipelines are independent from each other? And yeah, the, um, to, its, um, depend, uh, to a certain degree they are. Um, maybe if I go back to the slide, it's easier to explain. Um, they are um, both uh, use the Oncostar data. So, um, since that po uh, point, they are independent, but um, since they both rely, uh, use the base, uh, both the same data as, um, yeah, as input, and they have some, um, yeah, the, pre the ETS scripts in before to get the data into OncoStar, um, there we have the dependency, so there. Yeah, um, I didn't understand it all. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. As well. Yeah. I can do that. I have even some more detail, detailed slides. Uh, I presented it like last month on an, in a German conference, so I could easily do that. Yeah, that's just not a problem. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>